and I must say I was entertained by the statement of my dear friend from Delaware, and we are very dear friends, <laughs> but to somehow now call upon Republicans to work with you to fix this disaster after on the floor of the United States Senate, you did not allow a single amendment, not a single amendment by the Republicans were allowed. It's the first time an entitlement program has ever been enacted without, uh, on a strictly partisan basis. You had your 60 votes, you rammed the 60 votes and the Affordable Care Act down our throats. And so now that it's been an abysmal failure, you want us to come and help you bail it out. We want to replace it. We don't, we don't want to fix it, we want to replace it because it's been a complete failure in my state is probably the best example that I know of. We now have 14 of our 15 counties with, guess what, one provider. Do uh, you remember the, uh, if you like your doctor, you'll be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan, period. No man will take it away, no matter what. Of course, that turned out to be a lie. Ever since Americans have been hit by broken promise after broken promise and met with higher costs, less choices, greater uncertainty and poorer quality of care. And let me tell you, my home state of Arizona is hurt. We're talking about uh, next November 1st, seeing as much as 65% increases in premiums for our average citizens. We're now talking about, we're talking about young people who are now uh, opting clearly to pay a fine rather than to see these dramatically increasing costs. And of course, the cost of health care continues to skyrocket, all done on a pure partisan basis. I remember the victory dance that you guys performed after passing Obamacare over without a single Republican vote. And so now the chickens have come home to roost. So now the answer is, won't the Republicans join with us and fix this problem? Give me a break. We need to replace it. We need to fix it, and we need to go back to the fundamental principles of economics, which is not take money from healthy young people in order to take care of unhealthy older people. That was the fundamental broken premise. And now, of course, I guarantee you the next step will be that you guys are going to want to go to a government-run health care system. That will be your answer, which is in Europe is clearly a two-tiered system between those who are wealthy and can afford their own health care and those who are not who will have a substandard level of care. Mr. Chairman, I just, I'd like to have my statement included in the record, but the people in my state are hurting. The people in my state are hurting. We have 15 counties, 14 of them, there's only one care, one provider. We now have, we just for a period of time, we had a county with no provider. Now Blue Cross Blue Shield has moved, uh, moved in. Is that, is, is what is happening in my state, is that if you like your policy, you can keep your policy? If you like your doctor, you'll be able to keep your doctor, period? No one will take away uh, it, your health care? Of course, we have people scrambling all the time. As, the, as understandably, these providers have hundreds of millions of dollars in, co in co losses. They can't afford to, to stay in this affordable health care business. So, I thank you for holding this hearing. I thank the witnesses, and if, uh, if the senator from, uh, <coughs> from Delaware and his Democrat friends want to join together with us, yeah, let's, let's, let's throw it where it belongs, in the trash can, and start all over and give people an affordable health care system that they can live with and will not be the situation as exists in my home state of Arizona. I thank you, Mr. Chairman.